The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, Lena is not here now. I had something to say to her in the beginning, but doesn't matter. Uh, Nena gave me, hello everybody, uh, Nena gave me the title of the presentation and I was not really happy with it in the beginning, but I did my best to try to say what I mean by the title. Uh, actually, uh, let's go back. Um, what I did in presentation, I concentrated to EU policy requirements for Western Balkans to become members of European Union. And in thinking about how should I do the presentation, I would like to address, and later we can discuss, do you really know uh, what does it mean uh, to become an EU member state? Actually, what does the membership mean? Who can join? What are the preconditions for membership? And what is the uh, relationship between membership and security? Uh, well, in 2017, then the president of the European Commission, Juncker, made a State of the Union address where he talked about the European future of the Western Balkans, importance of stability in EU uh, uh, neighborhood, credible enlargement perspective for Western Balkan countries, and the name of communication that was then passed uh, consisted of addressing and emphasizing the importance that accession candidates must give the rule of law, justice, and fundamental rights outmost priority. Whatever does it mean? Well, let's see what does it mean. The name of the communication is quite interesting because the communication was then passed last year and the name of it, it's Credible Enlargement Perspectives for an Enhanced EU Engagement with Western Balkans. What does it mean, Credible Enlargement? What do me, what the European Union means by that? Well, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know, can you read it? Probably not, but, uh, it's very much, uh, it's very much, uh, uh emphasis that Western Balkans is the area which is of extreme importance for political security and economic interest out of EU. And coming back to the first slide, what does it mean to become a member? It's quite easy to check from legal standpoint that Article 49 of Treaty of European Union states that European Union candidate states must respect values enshrined in Article 2, and that means, I will read it, respect common values, human dignity, freedom, democracy, the rule of law, and respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minorities, and creating a society in which pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity, and equality between men and women prevail. And it's quite, this, these values are not just values. They are really able to be checked by different mechanisms. Well, talking about Western Balkans is of course not enough to respect all these values, but that can be visible in the area of migration, especially migration, how we handle migration, radicalization, terrorism, organized crime, and corruption. When I counted the word corruption in the strategy, it was mentioned 17 times, which is quite a lot. Then again, uh, we have to be aware because the rule of law needs to be enhanced when we are talking about future, as put in the seminar, we have to be aware that trade and economy is very important. And when you see the data of trade between EU and Western Balkans, then there is, in the last five years, direct investment was more than 10 billion euros. And actually, uh, um, so in 2016, you can see it on the great sli slide, regions, um, the region's total trade with the EU was worth over 43 billion euros. And of course, if you want to maintain good trade, you have to have very good courts. We have to have very good rule of law. And if you want to have it, we have to eradicate corruption. It's quite simple, at least in idea. So what is the point 
of joining EU and what is the point that EU expects from Western Balkan region is first of all that everyday life would progressively become closer to life within the European Union. The Western Balkan countries as an aim should become prosperous and equal with strong rule of law and corruption rooted out. And when we are coming to state-centered security concepts, it has been shifted from European Union and idea to individual security uh, concept. That means that the notion of human security becomes key and seven types of securities must be satisfied, economic, food, health, environment, personal, community and political security. Therefore, we can see that the shift has been done from state-centered to people-centered concept. Okay, let's continue. So what do we need to do in Western Balkans area? What is necessary? Well, credible efforts and informs needs to be done in the field of rule of law and fundamental rights. And what has been noticed and that Western Balkans countries have the element of state capture. What does it mean? That means that links with organized crime and corruption are present at all levels of government and administration, as well as strong entanglement of public and private interest. That means that we have uncompetitive and sometimes not equal businesses and individuals. And as you can see, especially today in political arena and illegal arena, state capture is pretty strong wording pretty strong wording, as, and then we will come back to this problem of the region. Uh, what, what else has been identified as a problem? Well, extensive political interference and control of the media. So freedom of expression throughout the region is not really on the level that is necessary to be. Big problem. We have not as such in Croatia, but we are still struggling with independence of independence and efficiency of judiciary and accountable governments and administration. What is needed then for Western Balkans is definitely public administration reform and empowered civil society. Therefore, when we are talking about the rule of law, then you can see in all documents of European Commission for Western Balkans, under the rule of law, it's trial monitoring, but, but not anymore in this area for war crimes. They, they are talking about war crimes in different bracket, but for rule of law, extensive trial monitoring in the fields of serious corruption and organi organized crime is definitely needed. And then again, the role of education is extremely important. I will come back later to it. Again, small slide. I want it to be modern with this. PowerPoint, but I'm, I didn't really succeed. Well, six flagships initiatives are then addressed, and this is to strengthen the rule of law, reinforce engagement in security and migration, fighting organized crime, countering terrorism and violent extremism, border security and migration management, support socioeconomic development. Because it's quite clear that the strategy of European Union it, is to respect all human rights, including economic and social ones. Increased transport and energy connectivity, initiative for digital agenda, supporting reconciliation and good neighborhood relationship, and war crimes trials are in that bracket. Rule of law consists of other areas. <laughs> and for all of you to know that we, when we are talking about modernizing this area, we should always address war crimes, and transitional justice coming to that, but we shouldn't uh, forget about new development. A new development and the newest strategy of European Union is definitely to enhance digital agenda, to address artificial intelligence issues, and this is becoming the priority of European Union. And I, I, well, all of it, what is listed in the strategy is quite demanding, I would say, but these are the area that have been uh, identified. What about private sector? We are here at this, uh, thank you, Robert, modern university, and definitely when you can see throughout the strategy, public uh, uh, private sector initiatives and building up entrepreneur climate 
um, uh, uh, really enhancing startups, it's also mentioned in the strategy of Western Balkans. And then again, you cannot have it if you don't have independent judiciary, which are, uh, which are not corrupted or which are uh, able to come to adjudication without uh, political influence. Okay. I did, I will not spend much time on that, but when we are talking about the topic of today, uh, uh, addressing war crimes is in the bracket of reconciliation, good neighborhood relationship and regional cooperation. And it's quite recognized that the, the wounds of 1990s are still need time to heal. And it has been recognized, as Nena was saying in the beginning, process of transitional justice is definitely incomplete. There are still open issues of missing persons, refugees, and internally displaced persons. On the territories, still, there are remaining landmines. And I don't think that countries were quite good in handling war crimes, including full cooperation with ad hoc tribunals. And this has been recognized. Uh, definitely, accountability and justice paradigm should also include, that has been mentioned, socio and economic rights when we are talking about past abuses. Because, uh, I must say here, Croatia definitely, other countries as well in the region, uh, we had privatization alongside war. Having that resulted in many violations of economic and social rights. And this has to be addressed in transitional justice mechanisms as well. And that has been neglected in many of our countries. Um, therefore, uh, it has been emphasized um, uh, a lot in the communication that Balkan region, which I put in red, is one of the key areas of engagement of the EU common security and defense policy. And that has to be in mind when changing our countries and making them, I mean, Croatia is part of it, but Western Balkan countries and making them able to become EU member and start the process actively. Uh, when I said, did we succeed with war trials? Well, you just have to remember homecomings of some war criminals. I put the picture of Sheshel here, but it can also go to, to other, um, uh, other um, uh, war criminals who were uh, found guilty in Hague. Are they villains or are they heroes in their communities? Did we welcome them with celebration or did we welcome, welcome them in home countries as really war criminals? That is something that all countries have still a problem. Then again, when we are talking about war uh, trials, ICTY legacy, we have many NGOs who are addressing this issue. But I must say, I'm talking about my opinion, we don't have that many civil society which are addressing corruption as much as they should and state capture as much as they should. So this part of transitional justice is very much neglected. Uh, when we come to Kosovo, it is especially emphasized in the communication. I have to come here to the slide so I can read it. That without effective and comprehensive normalization of belgrade pristina relationship throughout the EU facilitated dialogue, there cannot be lasting stability in the region. A comprehensive legally binding normalization agreement is urgent and crucial so that Serbia and Kosovo can advance on their respective European path. That has been also uh, mentioned without taking into consideration that all these brackets, six of them, must be fulfilled um, again. Well, I address this issue. What about corruption? Then I will come to the conclusion. What about corruption issues? Well, sorry. A concrete and sustained track records in tackling corruption, money laundering, and organized crime should be established as a matter of urgency. State-owned enterprises must be reformed as a priority and corruption addressed. In the morning, we discussed with our colleague from Serbia a new scandal in Serbia about arm dealing, about state-owned enterprise who then sold something to the private one and then lost money. 
According to European Union, state-owned enterprises must be reformed as a priority and corruption that there occurs must be addressed. Growth potential and competitiveness continue to be hampered by weakness, weaknesses in the rule of law and poor functioning of institution. There are too many additional things. There are too many obligations from regional agreements that have not been met yet. Therefore, our politicians are inclined to sign whatever sometimes. Well, European Union does check. And now currently pledges on anti-corruption done by Western countries are also under processes of being checked. We shouldn't forget that. But what has been emphasized and this is, I'm sure, one of the goals of Jeffrey Foundation seminar, is that the change of paradigm cannot come only from outside. If we do not change our way of behaving, our way of thinking, then nothing, non, none power of the universe can help us here. Therefore, regional cooperation, good neighborhood relationship and reconciliation cannot be imposed from outside. The leaders of the region must full ta take full ownership and lead by example. They must avoid and condemn any statements or action which would fuel inter-ethnic tensions and actively counter nationalist narratives. There is no place in the EU for in inflammatory rhetoric, let alone for glorification of war criminals from any side. Therefore, the process of transitional justice is incomplete. The outstanding sensitive issues, such as handling of war criminal cases, including full cooperation with the mechanism of um, uh, uh, international criminal tribunals and Kosovo Specialist Chamber, the fate of missing persons, refugees, as well as identification and removal of remain landmines in the region must be urgently again addressed. What about education? What can we do as a professor, as a scientist? Well, the role of education is extremely important, and the role of education must be given a higher priority, especially in terms of fostering greater tolerance, promoting European values, and strengthening the, the cohesion of society. The Western Balkan should invest more in their younger generation, our future EU citizens, and give them a perspective for the future, not the past. So every time that we are addressing transitional justice issues, at least in my opinion, we should also concentrate for the future. And that therefore cooperation should be here enhanced. What about cooperation? I have to say that we applied for a project. Um, Nena and I, we were, dis the, we were discussing how to make it. Thank you. And uh, I would like to share it with you. This is actually the first presentation of, of beginning, I hope, of, of long-term friendship and cooperation. We were thinking that we should think about whether we should establish Center for Transitional Justice for the region. That means that PhDs, of course, are welcome to be done abroad, but actually that region should respond to the need for research and to address urgent topics in the region by identifying what those uh, key areas are. Therefore, we agreed uh, to uh, prepare to set up a research center that would integrate scientific research with the practical experiences of transitional justice mechanism applied in post-communist Europe. And we would like to define research area belonging to transitional justice and to develop this uh, uh, need in the region. Well then, uh, it's up to all of us to think about what those areas are, what are the areas that would urgently need to be addressed scientifically and how we should do it. Uh, throughout this conference, uh, we will, I'm sure, um, uh, discuss more about it. But coming to communication from the European Union, and we discuss it, that in this, our future network of research, we will have to address not only war, war crimes, which is extremely important, but all areas of security, as European Union um, uh, emphasizes. That means problems with economic, food, health, environment, personal community, and political security. 
coming back to the ends. Uh, this is then, then we can only speak about credible enlargement perspectives and enhanced EU engagement with Western Balkans country. Thank you very much. Thank you.